Hello friends, welcome to Desi Plaza TV. In collaboration with Radio Karishma, this is your host Karishma. Today we have very special guests in our studio. Two very talented artists from the upcoming film Growing Up Smith, which is releasing Nation by Tomorrow. One of the actor is a writer, producer and an actor in the film Anjal Nikam, who is a well-established actor and has a lot of TV series, films and theater work to his credit. At the same time, uh, he is a very well known in the fraternity, very well known name in the fraternity. The second artist that we have uh, is uh, a 14 year old boy who is just starting with this film Growing Up Smith. So it's, this is his debut film. And it's absolutely a pleasure to have them here with us in the studio. Welcome Anju and welcome Ronnie. Thank, Thank you, you so much for giving us your precious time. Thank you for having yeah. us. <laughs> Well, congratulations, first of all, that uh, your movie is all set to release, and yeah. that is tomorrow. Tell us, how do you feel about it? Ronnie? Uh, well, I feel very um, excited for the film's release because it's been, uh, um, even after the film was shot, uh, it's been a while, and so it's really exciting um, that the film is finally coming out. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited to see how my friends and my family will uh, react to it. Oh, wow. It's Considering it's your very first film and mm -hmm. you've been working on this film for a really, really long time. Yeah. So, are you scared? I would like to ask, are you scared <laughs> or nervous to see yourself on the screen? I mean, I've already seen uh, the final film oh. about 20 times. Okay. Um, but with the audience. That'll yeah, with the thing. audience yes. too. And so far, uh, most of the um, things I've said is positive, so okay. I'm hoping that it stays positive. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And sir, I mean, you, for uh, you, it's a special yeah. moment. Yeah, well, it's been a long journey for me getting this movie uh, to the point that we can actually release it in theaters. We started this, uh, for me, it began about uh, over 10 years ago, where the first uh, original version of this project uh, was known as Good Old Boy. Okay. came to me to attach me as an actor. Mm -hmm. It was written, written by a gentleman by the name of Gregory Scott Houghton. Mm -hmm. And he based it on uh, a roommate of his named Ramesh Raju, okay. whose, you know, whose story about growing up in a small town in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. So I, I got the rights to it. He had asked me to attach myself as an actor. Mm -hmm. It was so long ago, I was going to play his role. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so now, I mean... No, but I, I got attached to play the dad, and... Okay. Um, you, couldn't, you couldn't play that yeah, anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I played, I played, uh, came on board as an actor to play the, uh, Smith's dad, mm -hmm. and um, I took the rights and took the opportunity to uh, bring, it, bring a lot more personal touches to okay. it, because I'd, I was born in, in India, but raised in Connecticut as yeah. an immigrant child in the 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... Um, bringing elements of all an upbringing in an immigrant family with immigrant parents who are very traditional mm -hmm. were elements that we had to infuse the infuse the script I've heard you've, you've actually taken a lot of inspiration from your own yeah. real life. Yeah, well of course there's a lot of, I mean as mm -hmm. writers that's our job is to you turn to what you mm -hmm. know, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of um, incidents, character development mm -hmm. and story arcs that are uh, consistent with my own mm -hmm. upbringing. So it's, uh, how long have you been working oh, on this film? So we, I got the rights of that script and finished writing that in about 03, 2003. Oh, in 2004, wow. I brought on another writer, an established mm -hmm. writer in the entertainment industry by the name of Paul Quinn. Mm -hmm. He and I wrote another version, which is the one you mm -hmm. finally see on screen. Oh, wow. uh, and we finished that in 04. And then began the long journey of getting the movie made, which means getting the financing for the movie. Wow. Uh, became, unfortunately, became a 10-year journey and uh, until we were fortunate and blessed enough to meet a gentleman out of the hedge fund industry in New York mm -hmm. who uh, had it on his bucket list mm -hmm. to make a movie. Oh, wow. And he chose our movie to do it with. That's awesome, and yeah. it's all set to release. It's, so tomorrow is Friday, February 3rd. Uh -huh. uh, by the time this airs, uh, it'll, probably be, in it'll probably be another day, yeah. yeah. So f we are opening in five cities, meaning uh, in Dallas, we're opening at 
at the AMC, AMC Stonebriar in 24, Frisco, in right? Frisco. In the Dallas area. And then in, in Chicago, Chicago area. AMC South Barrington. AMC South Barrington in Santa Clara, Silicon Valley at the Mercado, AMC, Mercado, AMC yeah. Mercado. In Hamilton, New Jersey at the AMC Hamilton. AMC Hamilton. And then in New York. New York City at the AMC Empire in Times Square. So we're going back today. I mean, tomorrow morning to New York City for our opening. For the premiere. For the premiere in New York City. So, I mean, um, you, now you, I can see that first you worked hard for the yeah. movie to be, you know, made and now it's finished. Now you're working hard for the promotion and everything. Yeah. And how this 14 year old boy has taken this. I mean, oh, he's how been. What's your experience working with this boy? Yeah, he's been a delight. You know, uh -huh. he's, he's like he has the vivacious energy to commit uh -huh. to whatever he's doing, which is something that is a very uh, traditional Indian uh, upbringing, uh, yes. which is commit to whatever you're going to do or mm -hmm. and do it 110 percent. And he's done it. He's been one of those kids who started saying he's going to be an actor mm -hmm. probably around the age of 10, mm -hmm. right? And. Uh, him and his wonderful parents have uh, supported him through this and picked up their bags and moved their home uh, across the country to, from Chicago to uh, Los Angeles and they still have their home in, in Chicago so they fly back and forth and uh, wow. making it happen. Now you have to tell us how you're managing. I mean, you have your study, study yeah. you know, you have your school work. He doesn't done. do school work, that's the one. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you have the other crew to take care of that. Is that so? <laughs> no. He's got his people. <laughs> his people do his homework for him. <laughs> no, I, I do my homework. Um, I actually go to a um, school in Los Angeles where it's um, a partially online school where you don't have to be at school. You only have to be at school for like taking tests and okay. certain... Um, classes that you might have to take like seminars lectures stuff mm -hmm. like that it's called sony playstation <laughs> <laughs> no um, i'm sure <laughs> but uh, yeah so that's what i'm doing right now um uh which I actually it's a good thing because right now i would have been doing pe <laughs> so nobody likes pe <laughs> yeah so, tell me something i mean uh, what was the inspiration behind you deciding that you want to be an actor at the age of 10 um, well, actually, it happened at the age of nine, so it was really close to ten. Um, so before, like I was around seven or six, my mom sent me to this act, this acting class, this summer acting program. Okay. Um, it, it was like a play. That's when I got my first taste of acting. I was mm -hmm. like, hey, this is pretty cool. I want to do more of this. So then my mom encouraged me to do more, and then. Um, at the age of nine, I got a theater play, uh, A Christmas Carol at the Goodman Theater okay. in Chicago, mm -hmm. which is a huge theater in Chicago. I played Tiny Tim. So after that theater, um, that and I did a Midsummer Night's Dream at the Lyric Opera. Those two theaters, that's when I knew I wanted to be an actor because mm -hmm. I just loved that entire experience. Mm -hmm. um, it was a great, f su hugely fun experience. Mm -hmm. And I wanted, um, I wanted to do more acting because mm -hmm. it was so fun. And that's when uh, my parent, uh, my parents, they were really supportive. They mm -hmm. um, still are very supportive, uh, and uh, they're the ones who kind of um, uh, pushed me into this. And mm -hmm. I'm very thankful that they did. Absolutely. Well, good for us as well. We are yeah, a we, very were lucky. Bright, uh, we were lucky. We were lucky. Sure. I mean, tell me something. I mean, he is talking like normal American <laughs> kid, <laughs> but in the film you play an Indian kid, and you yeah. have like beautiful Indian accent. How did you manage that? So actually, yeah. um, when we, uh, they were casting Smith, I was in India at that time. Okay. And uh, my cousin, he was learning English at school. Mm -hmm. So um, one of his uh, assignments was to come home and talk in English. And the only people in the household that spoke English was my mom and myself. Mm -hmm. So he used to talk to me in English. And during that time, we were going through the audition process. So I just kind of copied his accent yeah. a with a little bit of my parents' accent and just <laughs> yeah. put it into um, my accent, which I have in the film. Oh, wow. So how long did it take, I mean, to master that accent, I'm sure? Well, it I've been... It taken it, some time. Like, uh, I, it actually came pretty quick to me because my parents always speak with that accent um, okay. the entire time. <laughs> Uh, uh, what accent? I don't have any accent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was already accustomed to hearing it, and so I kind of knew um, how it was, and sometimes I was speaking it, but not really that often. Mm -hmm. But then this is like the first time where I was like speaking a bunch in okay. in the accent. So you are truly established and veteran actor. I mean, you've come here in U.S. when you were just two year old. Yes. Know? 
before you, you've seen it all, the, the era that you came in. Tell me, tell me your journey. I mean, um, so far, you know, how did you get well into this? And uh, now that you see today's scenario, how do you, what difference do you see, especially the movie that is coming today? I mean, you know, tomorrow, your movie. It talks about immigrants coming to hmm. U.S. at that time in 70s. Seems to be a little topical, some kind of stuff happening I heard about, yeah. right, <laughs> on CNN. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, so, I immigrated at the age of two uh -huh. from, from uh, Bombay, actually. My father was an IIT professor at okay. uh, IIT Bombay. And we came here for six months. It was intended to be just a six-month sabbatical mm -hmm. that ended up being a permanent green card, and mm -hmm. we ended up staying, my brothers and I. We were two, three, and four years old, mm -hmm. and my mother and my mm -hmm. father. Um, and we settled in Connecticut. Uh -huh. And the goal was to, uh, from my parents' perspective, the goal was to go back to India. And often immigrants do that, right? They come, come to the U.S., yeah. realize the American dream, and then go back. That's mm -hmm. the goal, yes. right? And my father's 83 now, and he's still an Indian citizen. He's holding on to his Indian passport with the intention of going back. Yes. But he still lives in the same home. Mm -hmm that we've been living in since the 70s. Um, my mother became an American citizen, mm -hmm. uh, and her reason to become an American citizen was to, to sponsor her siblings. Okay. So in Connecticut, we have a whole bunch of co cousins and uncles and, and nephews and stuff, but they're all from my mother's side okay. because she became an American citizen, but my father still remained. Yeah, yes. and she uh, was not too. Yeah, yeah, and I, I don't think he'll ever go back. Mm -hmm. But there's this idea that, you know, I know when I moved, uh, I, I mean, I grew up in Connecticut, lived in New York for mm -hmm. five years, I went to NYU, and then moved out to LA, mm -hmm. uh, to Los Angeles. And the goal for me was, I'm there to get out. I'm going to go to LA, become established enough as an actor, and then go back to New York. You know, that's my foundation. Yes. But of course, here I am 28 years later, I still live in LA, I've lived in Los uh -huh. Angeles longer than I've lived on the East Coast. Uh -huh. But there's a, you know, a connection to the East Coast to which you always call it your home, Yes. right? Yes. So LA is the home away from home, but your real home is the East Coast, mm -hmm. right? And I think that's the sense that a lot of immigrants have. They'll make this their home away from home, but they'll still be thinking of India or wherever you're because from, from. Yeah, Absolutely. as the real home, right? Yeah. Um. So, um, I was about to ask you, how different are the times? You have dated this film. Yeah, in 1979. You know, in 1979. Times are totally different. Yeah. Now, the world scenario is different as far as the immigrant immigration is concerned. Everywhere in the world, um, there is a noise about it. Yeah. So, uh, how, what was the, I mean, what did you think when you were making this film or you were writing it? When you started writing, things were still not... Yeah, they bad. weren't as divisive. Yes. You know, I think uh, what happens with divisive energy between people is uh, we stop listening to each other mm -hmm. and we start looking at uh, other people from a perspective of, well, I don't really need to know why it is what you want or you need, mm -hmm. right? I just know you're that. Yes. Right? Yes. And once you start taking a, uh, a, plat a platform that's more about universal themes, yes. and in our story, I mean, we tell quite simply three universal themes, which are first love, childhood heroes, mm -hmm. and growing up in a small town mm -hmm. where everybody knows your name. Yes. And you, we put it from the perspective of a 10-year-old East Indian boy, mm -hmm. uh, an immigrant boy, and that helps us shape the story. But at the same time, these are universal themes we're telling mm -hmm. that we're hoping that as people watch this movie, they recognize that ultimately we're all human beings. Absolutely. We all experience certain desires and certain needs mm -hmm. in our lives. And the thing is, desires and needs, they change over the course of a lifetime, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. When, you're, when you're in high school, your needs and desires are quite different. They're about getting into college, or mm -hmm. right? It's not about paying the mortgage. Mm -hmm. By the time you're in your 30s and you own a house, then it's about paying the mortgage, right? Absolutely. And Absolutely. you're going you're gonna to be voting for politicians based on policy decisions that affect where your lives are right now. Okay. But in that process of voting and whatnot, what happens is we begin, begin to divide by different class structures, the rich and the poor, the, the you know, women and men, uh, and it's like the old and the young. And it's endless, the different levels mm -hmm. of classifications. But all we're asking is, if we put it in a positive light, and, and when you start becoming, you know, when it becomes about memory, mm -hmm. you start seeing the positive, 
-hmm. of what happened in the in the past. And I think that's what we try to capture is the positivity yes. of it. We will park our thought here and we'll talk a little bit more about that, but it's time to take a short break and we'll well, come back right away. Sure. We'll take a short break and we'll be back.